All right, let's get to the big story of this hour. The much-awaited 5G spectrum auction kick-started today. A total of 72 gigahertz of airwaves is up for bidding. Four telecom companies, uh, Reliance, Geo, four bidders actually, Reliance, Geo, Bharti Airtel, Vodafone Idea and Adani Data Networks are bidding. Uh, for Spectrum. The Spectrum is valued at 4.3 lakh crore rupees and the 5G auctions would bring in new age offerings and business models. It would also enable ultra high speeds. 5G is about 10 times faster than 4G which we experience at the upper end of telecom and internet connectivity. Telecom Minister Ashwini Vaishnav while addressing media after the conclusion of day one of the auctions said that it saw good participation and the government is expecting to garner approximately 1.45 lakh crores from the auctions. While the auction process is likely to conclude tomorrow, the minister also said that 5G services could be rolled out as early as September or October. Approximate revenue expected from this auction process is about a lakh and 45,000 crore. Uh, this is a record uh, revenue collection. The previous record was a lakh and 9,000 crores. So this is uh, this is a very encouraging response. This much response for 5G clearly shows that the industry has turned its uh, turned from its uh, difficult times which were caused by lots and lots of litigations and other things. Now industry is getting converted into a sunrise industry. It is uh, it will now focus on investments, focus on creating more employment, providing better quality of service making sure that our goal of taking digital India and telecom services to the last person in the society. And uh, to speak more on this, I'm joined now by Sanjay Kapoor, former CEO of Bharti Airtel and Sunil David, co-chair Digital Communications Working Group at IET Future Tech Panel. Welcome to both of you and thank you so much for speaking with us today. Um, Sanjay, let's begin with your take on what we've seen from day one. Have the bids been fairly conservative or do they, as the minister says, point out to an industry ready to rev up again? Remember, the industry was not too happy with the pricing of this round of auctions. Yeah, good evening, Tamanna, and good evening to the viewers. Uh, you're absolutely right, Tamanna, that uh, the industry was demanding a deep cut on the reserve prices. But uh, the initial information that is coming out of the first days uh, auction results very clearly are uh, pointing towards a couple of things which are a surprise. To me, uh, 3,500 megahertz and 2,600 gigahertz was never a question. I, I knew that uh, there'll be bids around these. We know the pegging order of the bids as well with the earnest money deposit. We know Geo seems to be most bullish, followed by Airtel, followed by VIL, and uh, you know Adani's is just uh, probably for their own captive use. Uh, given that the surprise of the day is uh, 10 megahertz of 700 megahertz being bid, that was the most expensive spectrum. And I'm speculating that given the earnest money deposit, it could be uh, Geo who are bidding for that banner spectrum, uh, which is very powerful and potent spectrum, but very, very expensive. Now, the result of this could be that if it's Geo that's bidding, then it'll uh, automatically create pressure on Airtel at some stage. And uh, moreover, that 700 was never a bid earlier in the previous auction that was let go by everybody. This time around, the price will get established for 700. So nobody will be able to buy it cheaper than this uh, in, 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 in the coming auctions. The second thing is that uh, despite of a lot of spectrum available, there seems to be some competitive bidding around 800, 1800 and 2100 uh, megahertz. You know, so these are, these are the hot, hot ones. But all said and done, um, you know, uh, 5G is something that the world has been experiencing for a while. Uh, India has to quintessentially get into it, uh, like the minister said, as early as September. I don't know what will be the definition of the September launch, but, uh, uh, you know, it could be some sort of a date that could be met uh, uh, for a flag off. But eventually to roll out uh, meaningful services, use cases will have to be developed. Uh, 5G is not a... Uh, carpet bombing strategy where you go and roll out like 3G and 4G and then find customers. Uh, this is more an enterprise play other than connectivity, which is provided through the access part. But when you come to latency and you come to internet of things, you need enterprise level use cases to go and sell. And that's uh, a new phenomena that will face the industry going forward. But I think we've talked about this earlier. The biggest challenge across the globe 
and India is no exception to it, is how do you monetize 5G? Because the countries that have rolled out 5G have not seen really a great bump up in their revenues or on their bottom line. So I think uh, the jury is still out on that and India will have to go through the same learning uh, along with the rest of the world and develop use cases for which consumers will play uh, a premium. Now, the disadvantage that India has is that we are starting at very low ARPUs. At ARPUs of 178, 180, uh, if the customer doesn't agree to pay you higher prices even for the access of 5G, which is high speed, then where do you go? Because it's a new investment cycle. It'll do a lot of good to a lot of innovation. There'll be new digital services. There'll be a new and expanded ecosystem. But if you don't monetize it, then how do you satisfy, satisfy your investors uh, you know, who put money behind uh, this new cycle of investment? So I think that's the big challenge that everybody faces. And therefore we need to watch the spectrum uh, 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 auctions, how much money really gets um, uh, invested. Second, uh, what are the ARPUs that get raised after the services are up? And thirdly, what is the speed of devices, 5G devices available in the country? And yeah. finally, the infrastructure, both for backhaul, uh, that is fiber, uh, although uh, E-band is being given out, uh, which will give some wireless backhaul as well. And finally, infrastructure of towers to make sure that in-building coverage is there to offer uh, great quality consumption to your consumers. You know, you're, you're of course the expert, uh, Sanjay, and you've explained it beautifully. I would just say that a lot of the 4G experience in India doesn't really feel like 4G. So we should get 5G, which actually feels like 5G. Uh, that's the sort of layman's perspective that you've explained uh, very beautifully. But Sunil, let me come to you, your take on day one. And the question of whether this is going to now trigger off another rate war as far as 5G is concerned, whether it's 5G, 4G or 3G, there's no changing that this is a very price sensitive market. Right. So uh, thank you, Tamanna, for inviting me to the show and good, up, good evening to all the viewers. Uh, as far as uh, today's auctions are concerned, uh, no surprise that, uh, you know, the bidding was more for the mid-band spectrum 3.3 to 3.6 gigahertz and the higher band spectrum. But uh, what really surprised me, as Sanjay mentioned, was bidding for the 700 megahertz spectrum, the sub gigahertz. Uh, while it has uh, higher propagation characteristics, good for certain use cases, but it's obviously very expensive. Uh, and um, my guess is also that perhaps Geo would have bid for it. Uh, now, my my take on this is that uh, all spectrum, uh, we, you know, may not be sold in this auction. Uh, I guess auction would be ending tomorrow. Uh, what the operators would do is uh, kind of test the waters over the next couple of years. And I would expect another option maybe two or three years from now. That is what I my view is. Um, as far as, uh, you know, the competitiveness is concerned, yes, uh, from a consumer standpoint, uh, our pools uh, for operators uh, were, you know, would probably go up by maybe 15 to 20%. Uh, they would be obviously targeting the current high ARPU customers and customers uh, who are willing to pay a premium for superior 5G services, given that it's much lower latency, uh, the kind of application that you're going to experience is going to be much better, uh, faster throughputs and so on. Uh, so, so maybe 15 to 20% uh, increase in ARCUs is what I would anticipate in Tamanna uh, going forward as far as the consumer mobility is concerned. But uh, as Sanjay mentioned, uh, it's going to be strong enterprise play. Uh, that's where the monetized op opportunities would come for the telcos. Uh, and, you know, I think for the telcos, it's extremely important that uh, they can't confine themselves just to connectivity. They have to have layers over the connectivity piece. They have to, 5G is an ecosystem play. They need to have, make sure that they are able to build those right 5G use cases, work with the, uh, you know, other players in the ecosystem and kind of act as an ecosystem orchestrator and enable a 5G service to an enterprise customer because that's where uh, their monetization would come. That's where growth would come from, uh, Tamanna. Yeah. Um, Sanjay, are we still uh, speculating and wondering what Adani is doing in this uh, auction? Or are we uh, taking that uh, response uh, and uh, what they've said about it at face value, that this is for their private enterprise and that's pretty much it? What will you be watching out for when it's clear at the end of the day what these auctions or these rounds of auctions have yielded? Yes, Tamanna, I'm, I'm not second guessing uh, Mr. Adani. I think what he's saying uh, is also uh, reflected in the earnest money that he's put in. Uh, with that amount of earnest money, you can't do uh, a competitive bid with uh, the likes of Geo and Airtel. 
uh, and therefore i think he is just uh, going to use it for captive use cases which he must be building because he is an infrastructure player and in the infrastructure that he owns uh, you know he could probably uh, build a monetization uh, 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 you know sort of a play over there and 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 could offer both experience and monetize his his assets uh, better so i think that's what he's doing he's not uh, the fourth telecom operator or the third big telecom operator in the market for now um, i don't know how things will unfold tomorrow this <clears throat> round is clearly between jio and airtel and jio seems to be more aggressive especially after this 700 um, um, megahertz of uh, bit you know he's he's taking 5g very seriously i must say and is also setting a benchmark for airtel because airtel will be under pressure uh, because of this spectrum ban for um these auctions or i would say even 6 months ago the whole conversation when we discussed telecom is um is we going to survive and yes they got a lifeline they've made it uh, to the auctions they've participated as well uh, but post 5g and if jio's indeed clearly from the honest money they are the biggest bidder and uh, if they really walk away with most of the haul so neil i just want your assessment of what that does to the telecom industry and the space overall and what does that mean for v well so i anticipate that it's going to be a, a kind of a duopoly situation that will evolve in india over the next 2 uh, to 3 years uh, and uh, what i would also anticipate is that uh, you know 5g uh, would trigger a lot more iot adoption and given that jio's uh really focusing a lot on the iot segment both from a consumer as well as enterprise standpoint uh, we probably going to see a lot more iot adoption uh, happen because one of the big important pillars of 5g is massive iot and if you just look at uh, iot adoption in india and i am an iot evangelist uh, we kind of barely scratch the surface when it comes to iot adoption and with 5g i think the adoption is bound to increase it will trigger a lot more use cases whether it's manufacturing healthcare smart cities and so on so uh, so and reliance have building iot capabilities jio uh, airtel has already have a good iot stack so it's going to be reliance and airtel competing largely targeting the enterprise and uh, you know whoever has the best stack in terms of offering an end to end offering to a customer i think they are the other ones who are likely to win in this game uh, now we've spoken from the industry perspective but i think uh, we must speak about what this means for the end consumer uh, in the indian market at the end of the day that's very very important roti kapda makan has uh, been uh, you know replaced by roti kapda makan and uh, internet so what will this eventually mean uh, sanjay will these companies be able to charge a premium does that mean that the consumer will have to fork out a lot more for 5g services and I, as i asked earlier will it actually be the kind of international standard of quality of 5g uh, that we find in india as well so uh, tamanna um, uh, it's a it's a very modular approach uh, i don't believe that uh, uh, any operator whether airtel or jio will be able to build about a uh, build up a world class 5g stand alone network uh, overnight uh it'll take a few years of investments to go and perfection to be built uh to make things uh contemporary and uh competitive versus rest of the world i have seen 5g networks being rolled out over the last couple of years with a few operators across the globe and it's a it's an evolution it doesn't happen overnight uh by the time it becomes a uh, roti kapda makan and 5g uh all over india it'll take a long time for two or three specific reasons 5G devices are still very expensive and the penetration of 5G devices in India is very dismal it will take time before it uh, uh, becomes a mass product and early on it will go into metros big cities and high end customers as the prices of chips and devices uh, become more competitive it will percolate down uh, to rest of the society but that's from the devices perspective you have to realize that telecom is a play of devices digital content digital services storage security and access all these things have to play together and when it comes to access now i really compare india say with china you know china today uh, has close to a billion customers who moved on to 5g but they also have more than a million 5g sites which have come up and they are talking about trebling it over the next 3 years now we have about 250000 260000 towers 
you know so india where where does it ha- does it have to go to give you really competitive services a million towers a million and a half i don't know what that number is we'll figure that out but definitely not 250000 260000 towers then we need backhaul of course the e band is now being made available therefore some wireless backhaul will be possible but fiber is quint essential uh, to make 5g success we have a lot of intercity fiber but we may not have that much of intercity fiber and not have too many towers connected maybe one operator has more than others but bulk of the operators don't have all their towers connected to fiber that all needs to be done so consumer experience is a conglomeration and coming together of all these factors which will take time to build i think initially 5g and 4g will work in tandem we still have 3g which is being sunset and we still have 2g where we have almost 300 million customers now for them to transform onto 5g not going to happen overnight it will take a long time till the operators decide to sunset it and also the complexity rises now the operators will be dealing with 2g 3g 4g 5g it gets as complex as that so to offer a consumer experience which cuts across all this devices that cut across all these bands etc is not easy so so i guess 5g is a path we are on we are never going to get off that the train has left the station with these auctions but for us to be contemporary and competitive with rest of the world on our infrastructure and services i think is an evolution it will take a few years not a few quarters to make that happen just take that take from sunil as well because at the end of the day what does it mean for consumers and if you can also add the perspective of how much more is it going to cost what is the premium you would have to pay for this uh, the question was for me tamanna yes yes sunil yes i think uh, uh, for a consumer ji i think it depends on how you package 5g uh, tamanna because uh, the way you package 5g you know 5g is not just not about faster speeds because if you just look at the previous generations of technology from 2g to 3g to 4g it was all about faster data speeds but 5g is promising to alter the dna of the user experience right so uh, it's promising much much lower latency you're talking about latency of less than 5 milliseconds throughputs of 1 gigabits per second and higher extremely highly reliable networks right so it depends on how you package it and you got to bundle that connectivity with content and uh, you know other offerings and I, i think customers would be willing to pay a 15 to 20% premium tamanna in my view Uh, especially for the current high arpu customers uh, uh, you know so and i think as sanjay mentioned you know this is going to evolve the use cases have to evolve the device ecosystem is still not there 5g handset costs have to come down and i think it definitely would take at least a couple of years before we see a lot more adoption of uh, 5g from a consumer standpoint okay so it's going to get exciting september october is when we could see it finally roll out will there be mini trials it's supposed to be in 2022 cities initially that will all have to be seen uh, thank you so much to both of you for joining us on the big story the lead story this evening now my colleague danish anand uh, has been tracking the story all day he is breaking down everything that went down on day 1 of the auction But the day one of 5G spectrum auction has concluded, and on day one there were in total four rounds of bidding. And Telecom Minister later said that all four participants, Bharti Airtel, Reliance Jio, Vodafone Idea, and Adani Data Networks, showed great uh, participation in all the four rounds. As far as revenue expectation is concerned, the government has said that they are uh, expecting to earn much more revenue as they had anticipated. As out of these auctions, the government is expecting to earn somewhere around 1.45 lakh crore, and this is a new record because previously 2015 in the earlier 2015 auctions a uh, government had uh, had earned and uh, earned a revenue of 1.09 lakh crore and this time we are seeing a great and a huge jump despite uh, seeing comments from telecom uh, industry that uh, they were not happy with the base price uh, but as far as the demand for certain bands is concerned a uh, government sources have later said that uh, great demand was seen in the 700 megahertz band besides this some uh, good interest was also shown in the mid band as well as in the uh, uh, the 2.2 sub gigahertz band so all in all if we see uh, the government has seen a great participation from the telecom industry and the revenue that the government is expecting to earn out of these auctions is much higher uh, than uh, they had anticipated so all in all uh, if we see uh, 5g is, is, is set to be a rea- reality in india and it is expected by 15th august the whole uh, spectrum process will get completed and we can expect the 5g services to kick off in october or september 2022